I'm Ian Goldsmith, uh, Product Management for SOA Software. I want to talk to you a little bit about API proxy versus gateway, which is good because that's what, what's written at the top of the whiteboard here. So we're going to start with the basic premise. You're a business and you want to be able to communicate with your consumers, your customers, um, or new customers you haven't developed yet. Customers that are using a range of devices, from a house, through a car, through a TV, a tablet, a phone, beautifully drawn phone, I might add, um, or a computer. Um, so what you want to be able to do to be able to integrate with those guys is to expose an API. And that API will reach out and magically everything's going to work and you've got an API you're communicating with your customers. Perfect. Well, maybe not, because you've got some concerns. You have to be a little bit worried about security, you have to be a little bit concerned about availability and monitoring, and you need to be concerned about threats. You want to make sure that stuff that's happening outside the enterprise isn't breaking stuff that's going on inside the enterprise. So, what do you do? Well, logically, you def define a proxy, you deploy a proxy. Let me use my handy dandy little race car eraser, and we'll drop a proxy into this thing. Proxy does a few things for you. First thing it's going to do is add transport security. Then, you're going to use it to make sure the things, your API is available and reliable, to add some monitoring for things like SLAs and performance. You probably also need to provision access to your API from the outside world, and the transport security will help you with that. But you'll be doing that in order to control quotas. You want to be able to offer different users different parts of your API, different access levels, gold, silver, bronze, services, all that kind of stuff. A lot of the reason you apply quotas is to make sure that you're protecting yourself against threats and against load. So that's a proxy, nice and simple. What you've basically done is taken your API, exposed it to your consumers. But what you have to realize is that the proxy only works if you already have an API. You have to be exposing an API from your business in order to use a proxy. The proxy doesn't create anything new, it just re exposes the same thing, adding a few non functional requirements. So that's not really the reality for most businesses. In reality, most businesses look a bit different than that. You have existing services inside the enterprise exposed by one or more applications. In this case, we'll keep things nice and simple and show two business applications. I'm going to stick to using the word apps, even though it's a little bit confusing, but that's fine. So we've got some applications inside your business. Also, in a modern world, in most businesses, most large enterprises, you're not really just one business. You have lots and lots of businesses distributed geographically, spread around all over the world, doing your own thing in your own data center, quite probably using different applications. You've grown through acquisition, you've got all sorts of stuff going on. So these services that already exist, when I label them, services, that already exist inside the enterprise, you need to find a way of exposing those and creating them as an API. And that's where the gateway comes in. So once again, let's do a little bit of erasing. We'll create a few holes here and there. We'll start this process over. And what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do in a gateway is do some orchestration. What orchestration will allow me to do is to take these services and stitch them together to create a single something. For now, we'll call that something an API. In fact, we're probably going to do a little bit more to it before we can really think of it as an API. So what else do we need to do? Well, we're going to need some mediation. Mediation is the way that I'm going to take my existing services from whatever format and mechanism they're delivered and expose them as something a bit more modern usable. So these things are quite likely things like so. Uh, maybe there's some JMS, plain old XML. Maybe if you're really lucky, you've got some modern applications that are doing um, REST JSON. Who knows what this is? This might be a mainframe application. It could be anything. So what we what we do with the mediation layer is we take SOAP and we turn it into REST JSON, or we take REST JSON and we turn it into SOAP. The reality is it really shouldn't matter what's back here, and it really shouldn't matter what format you want your API in. You should be able to go from one to another declaratively. What you shouldn't have to do is write code. You should never be writing code or engaging professional services teams to do these things for you. 
you need a gateway that makes that seamless and does it automatically as, as part of the platform. Extending on top of this gateway style functionality, you need things like um, message security. Message security is really important as opposed to transport level security because the message security allows you to ensure end-to-end -end security. You're guaranteeing the identity of the user of this application all the way through to the back-end system. You're dealing with things like authorization that we're layering here. Very tough word to write on the whiteboard. Authorization. We're starting to get into some sophisticated capabilities around denial of service prevention. Denial of service prevention is um, things like the traditional XML firewall capability. So XML width, depth, breadth, uh, SQL injection protection, various uh, scripting, antivirus, all those kind of, kind of capabilities wrap up into denial of service. And these capabilities are all delivered through a gateway. And in reality, the gateway is also going to wrap your proxy. So the gateway will exist here. And the gateway includes the proxy functionality, delivers all of this orchestration, mediation, message security, etc., on top of the transport level security and monitoring the quotas that the proxies give you. And it's allowing you to create single APIs from multiple backend systems and do all that sort of stuff. So there are a couple of questions that arise. The first is, well, well, hey, that gateway looks an awful lot like an ESB. So where is an ESB and what do I do with it and why wouldn't I use an ESB for this? Well, the ESB really exists in here. It's sort of between your applications and your services. The ESB is, is really an extension of your EAI platform. It's delivering an adapter framework to allow you to expose services from your applications. Does the ESB contain orchestration? Yeah. Probably. Some of them do. Does it contain mediation? Yeah, probably. Message security? Likely, but it's starting to get a bit more difficult. Authorization? DOS prevention? Probably not. And the reality, anyway, is that the ESBs are generally fairly heavyweight pieces of technology. They're quite costly to operate. You're developing, you're doing a lot of work in the ESB that you may not necessarily want to do to expose services as an API. And more to the point, you're definitely not going to want to deploy that ESB in the DMZ. And that's the design pattern of a gateway designed to exist inside your DMZ with one leg in the outside world and one leg in the inside world, providing that bridge and dealing with all these sophisticated capabilities. So that's question one. ESB, part of your application tier, and the gateway existing externally. The other question is, well, what we've written up here, API proxy versus gateway. If the gateway does all this, why would I ever want just a proxy? Well, in, in our world, you wouldn't. The gateway delivers the proxy capability, what some vendors might tell you is that the proxy is more efficient, it's lighter weight. Why would you want all this heavyweight stuff when all you really need is this? Well, that may be true that all you really need is the proxy for some capabilities. Um, and, and what you'll be told is that proxies are faster, the gateways slow things down, add cost, uh, add weight to your process. That's really not true. A well-architected, well-designed gateway is going to act as a proxy when it needs to act as a proxy. It'll only add these extra capabilities when required. It's driven by configuration. It should be all declarative based on the need. For example, if your backend service is a well-structured, well-constructed REST JSON API, and you're passing it through the gateway with no need for message security or authorization, you don't need orchestration, you don't need mediation, you may choose, you don't need denial of service prevention, so the gateway is simply going to act as a proxy. It will stream content through adding transport security, monitoring it, forcing quotas without any additional overhead. Of course, as soon as you start getting into more sophisticated cases, your back-end service is SOAP, your API has to be REST JSON, then the gateway just automatically takes over. It delivers that functionality declaratively. You're not writing code, you're making things work. So, to summarize, should I use an API proxy or should I use a gateway? Both. Just make sure they're all in the same product. Thank you.